In this lesson, we look at how to handle the final annuity payment in the presence of partial periods. There are two main methods. The first one is called a drop payment, and the second one is a balloon payment. In a previous video, we answered the following question on the screen, which reads, if you've borrowed $10,000 with a repayment plan of $500 per month, and the interest is 8% compounded monthly, how many payments will you need to make? We learned that the answer to this is roughly 21 and a half payments. So this means that our loan will be repaid back in 21 months plus a partial month. Let's look at this on a timeline. So here's a timeline where zero represents at the very beginning of the loan. And at the very beginning of the loan, the present value is $10,000. For 21 consecutive months after you got your loan, you have been paying $500 each month. Fast forward to the end of the 21st month, you will pay $500 again, but that won't be enough to pay back the $10,000 because of this partial period. How do we ensure that our loan is repaid back completely? We'll start with this idea of a balloon payment. A balloon payment is a slightly larger final payment made at the very end of the annuity itself. So we'll be paying $500 plus a value X that will ensure that the present value is fully paid off. Let's look at this mathematically. So we know that the present value, the loan itself is for $10,000. The payments represented by PMT in this formula is 500. We also have one takeaway one plus, the interest was 8% compounded monthly. So we take 0 0.08, our nominal interest, and we divide it by 12, the number of periods in a year. That represents our I value. And that's being raised to the power of negative 21. Remember, we're not considering this partial payment at the moment. We're just concerned about up to 21 periods. And that's being divided by, again, the same interest of 0 0.08 divided by 12. Now, if you calculate this on its own, it will be a little less than $10,000. You can verify that on your own with a calculation. So we need to add another value X. But this extra value X that we owe needs to be discounted 21 periods as well. So just as this $500 is discounted 21 periods, this value of X must also be discounted 21 periods. And the way we represent that is by taking the value of X, this unknown future value, and dividing it by 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 12 raised to the power of 21. I'll now show you how to solve for X. First, we must evaluate this part of the equation. We have to find out what that is. Once we find what it is, we will transfer it over to the left side. Essentially, we are looking to isolate for x. Let me show you how to do that on your calculator. If you have a model like this one, you can easily input expressions as large as these by using some special features. Take a look. We'll take 500, open up parenthesis, open up a fraction, then put in your numerator. One take away, one plus 0 0.08 divided by 12 raised to the power of negative 21. At the bottom, we put in 0 0.08 divided by 12. As I said before, this should output something slightly smaller than 10,000. And you see it now on your screen. So we'll take that value, transfer it over, and what we end up with is 10,000 take away that value. Let's write it down. It's 232.1676. Let's take a look. Now what we still have on the right side is this expression in purple that we haven't changed. We're still looking to find the value of x. To isolate for x, we simply take the value on our screen and multiply it by a factor of 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 12 raised to the power of positive 21. And what we end up with is 266 and 93 cents. What this value is telling us is that our final payment of $500 must be accompanied by an extra $266.93. So the sum of this plus 500 
makes our final balloon payment. So let's go ahead and add 500 to that, round it to two decimal places. Our last payment would be 766 and 93 cents. So that's a balloon payment. What about a drop payment? Let's go back to the timeline we had earlier. A drop payment means that we will wait another period to pay the extra amount that we owe. So rather than 21 periods, we'll have an extra period that is a 22nd period, and this value of x will be shifted at the end of that 22nd period. To calculate this, not much changes. In fact, what you see highlighted in this equation remains the same. The only thing that changes is the second term in the equation. Instead of this 21, it becomes 22. Let me go ahead and rewrite that so that way we have a way of comparing the two equations. So this was the setup for the balloon payment, and this is the setup for the drop payment. Let's take some values that we calculated already. We had 232.1676. Let's write that down. But the right side now has changed slightly with the exponent being 22 instead of 21. Taking the value that's on the calculator and multiplying it now by 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 12 raised to the power of 22 gives us a value of x that is slightly larger than what we calculated earlier. And this is expected because essentially we're deferring this payment of $266.93 one period later. Interest accrues on this. And the amount of interest is shown in the difference in this number versus that number. Technically, you could have found the final drop payment by finding the future value of this one period later at the same interest rate. I hope you now see the difference between a balloon payment and a drop payment. If you have any further questions, please leave them in the comment section. Thank you for watching.